Coach, the Broncos are coming off a split with Omaha, which is a team that historically we've split with pretty much every time we play them. Um, you know, Friday was a good effort. Saturday was also a good effort. They were just able to take advantage of our mistakes. You know, it's, it's, it was really an interesting series. Uh, we actually felt as a coaching staff and as a team that we played better on Saturday night than we did on, on Friday night. Uh, the scoring chance differential on Saturday was probably as high as we've ever had it. Uh, we recorded 21 scoring chances for our team and 12 for them, and somehow we ended up on the wrong side of the scoreboard, 6-3. to three. Some crucial mistakes, obviously, obviously situations where we had chances to bury some pucks and score some more goals and didn't do that. But uh, determined effort. Omaha is a really uh, strong team. They're physical. They play with a lot of energy. Um, you know, they, they saw early that the referees were going to allow a lot of contact with the goaltender, and they used that, and, and that's the way the referees were calling the game. We had to adjust and get a little more pressure on their net as well there too. But uh, Mike Gabinet's done a great job with their program and their recruiting, and, you know, we're looking forward to the opportunity to go out there and play them. But I uh, felt our team played two real hard games. The unfortunate part is we didn't get two wins. You go to Denver, a team that uh, you know doesn't need to be any hungrier to be good. They have terrific talent, and here they are, 0-2-2 in the league. It's been a couple of weeks since they won the game. How do you address a team that you know you're going to play against that is incredibly hungry? Well, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter whether teams are hungry or whether they're coming off two wins. It's always a debate amongst coaches, I think, in any sport. Are you better playing a team that lost their last game so they're maybe down a little bit or – are you better off playing a team that won their last game? So maybe they're floating a little bit too high. And, you know, our bottom line is that we look at their talent. They've got great players. They've got solid goaltending, really mobile defensemen. They've got some smaller scooters that are tough to contain. So we're excited about the opportunity. Obviously, they're a, a national contender every year. And, you know, to find your way to get into the national tournament at the end of the year, teams like Denver have to be beaten. You're missing some major pieces from your own lineup. Any updates on any of those guys? You know, it, it, it's interesting. I've had a lot of people inquiring as to what's going on and how are guys getting hurt. And, you know, we had, as I mentioned, we had a guy the other day that uh, was on a shootout and slipped and fell and uh, is not going to be able to play. We had another guy we were working on the power play and kind of slipped into the boards on his own. And so there are injuries that are happening. We're not getting any strains or muscle cramps or groins or hip flexors uh, these have been bones in nature there and the kind of thing you just what can you say you shake your head put the next guy in there and you get the job done and we look at the lineup that we played on Saturday night and some people could say you're missing four top end players which those are top end players but the guys that went in there played like top end players and that's all we're worried about. Coach, there was a lot of contact with your goaltender, and I thought contact with the goaltender was a penalty. How do you how do you respond to that? What do you tell your goaltender? What do you tell your players? Well, I, I think the bottom line is is I don't know if we responded to it in the right way. I think we got worried about it, uh, maybe worried about the referees calling it. Again, the referees set a standard; they were going to allow that to happen, and we can complain here about the officiating, but I don't think you get any place doing that. We just have to deal with it. Uh, we needed to get more pressure in their net. We needed to be a little bit harder on their goaltender if that's the way they were going to call the game. And, and we didn't do that. And did it bother some of our guys? Did it bother Brandon Bussey? That, that's certainly possible, but that can't become part of the equation there. That's the way the game was being played. That's the way the game was being called. And we had to adapt to it better than what we did. How about Denver's style of play? What do you see in them so far this season? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Denver's uh, real quick. They've got some great forwards. Their offensive zone cycles as good as anybody in the league. If you give them room to maneuver in your zone, they're going to turn you, twist you, and get the puck to net there real quick. They've got great transition. You cannot afford to turn the puck over in front of them. you got to make sure you get pucks in behind them. They've got a real uh, solid core of defensemen that move the puck. Uh, a couple of big guys that play physical. And they've got a European goaltender that's played very well for them. So a lot of key ingredients. They work. That's the bottom line. They've been successful as a program in recent years because they're never short, short on work ethic. North Dakota held them to just two goals on the weekend. Have you had a chance to see kind of what they did to frustrate Denver? I have watched one of the games. I'll watch the second game tonight. But, uh, I mean, again, uh, North Dakota's playing hard right now. They're defending. They're getting great goaltending. They're not taking a 
a lot of penalties, which has been a problem at times for North Dakota. So um, bottom line is they just played real solid, and they had the puck a lot. North Dakota's got some forwards this year that can hang on to the puck, and, and when you hang on to the puck, it's you know, you're not going to be in defensive situations that often. It's called – I had this old Swedish guy when I used to coach in, in Switzerland. I was just a – I don't know if I was ever a young coach, but I was a younger coach, and – I'm on the bench, and we're in an important game. And this Matsvall team was a legend. He was about 40 years old, and he was on the bench. And he never, ever said anything to me or to anybody on the bench. But we're in this one game early in the season. It's a tight game. And as a coach, you're behind the bench. You're saying, get it out, get it in, get it out, get it in. And Matt's kind of tapped me on the shin pads, and he said, Coach, why don't we just keep the puck? I said, Matt, that's a pretty good idea. So I call it Matt's Waltine Hockey, and we did a real good job of it on Friday night against Omaha. They didn't have the puck at all. They didn't generate any scoring chances in the third period until they got that one with 30 seconds to go because we played some Matt's Waltine Hockey. So um, you need the puck, and that's what North Dakota did to Denver on the weekend. 12 games into the season, on any given night, you can have up to five freshmen and sophomores playing on, on the defensive uh, unit there. How have they progressed towards the season so far? Uh, good question. I think every single one of them gotten better. Um, it shows our depth on the back end. Uh, it's kind of the next man up mentality, but at the same time, we do have a development plan for all our players. And I guess you could you know, obviously start with, with Ronnie Adder, obviously. Uh, who was injured on the weekend, but his game was starting to come alive. He was getting more confident uh, as the games added up. Uh, Scooter Brickey's come in and done a nice job, competes real hard, is getting some minutes on the on the penalty kill. And Mikey Joyo didn't get a whole lot of minutes last year has come in, and uh, he's earned his minutes on the power play, and obviously I think he's leading our team in points right now, and he's been a good puck mover and he's gotten better defensively and obviously we got guys like Bafia and Samus who carry the heavy minutes on the matchups and penalty kill and their game has both progressed on, on their ability to move pucks up the ice so uh, Jared Kucherik as well he's getting better defensively he's using his uh, long stick and his ability to break up play so all our guys are getting better and nothing replaces game experience you can only do so much teaching with video and with practice reps, but they're getting real good at game experience, good minutes, and ultimately they're all getting better. You mentioned Ronnie Adderd. How do you approach that situation with a guy who's played well in his young career, now he has to sit out? What are you saying to him in that situation? Well, there's nothing you can do. He's just uh, in a holding pattern. Obviously, he liked to be in there playing because his game was starting to come alive. He was, you know, the quite arguably the best defenseman in junior A hockey last year, and he won the award for USA player of the year scoring 30 goals in the USHL which is an outstanding hockey league and uh, he had some ups and downs early but he started to come in his own his last three or four games and then you go down with an injury he's got to deal with it I think mentally but he's he's getting through so he's in a holding pattern right now but I think he'll be able to get in here fairly shortly. Denver's a team with a lot of talent in the forward position yet they haven't scored a lot of goals lately what have you seen from them and how do you approach that offense? Well, if you look at their team last year, again, they're considered young. Um, they weren't scoring goals early, and I think they got into kind of a, a defensive game approach, and they've won a lot of close games, 2-1, one, one nothing. They didn't ho score a whole lot last year, so they've bought in defensively. Uh, they're real tough to score on. They don't give you many looks at the net, and when they do, their goaltender's outstanding. So I think we have to put as much pressure as we can on the goaltender have some net presence there and make sure we're penetrating to the net and spending a lot of time in the ozone. You got uh, Cam Lee back on the blue line last weekend. He's getting back in the swing of things, but when he's at his best, what is he doing for you out there on the ice? Well, I think you saw a little bit of that on, on Saturday night for, for a guy that's missed so much hockey, and you got to give Cam credit. He pushed himself to get back in to game shade as much as possible. He was skating himself twice a day to get into some conditioning shape. Um, I think he had some aches and pains the first game there on Friday, but Saturday night I thought uh, it was one of his best games in terms of not turning the puck over. He was carrying the play. He was moving the puck. He was a threat defensively uh, or offensively on the power play, sorry. 
he was able to transport the puck and create some offense that way. I think he was a plus four, plus five on scoring chances, didn't give up anything against. So obviously he had a highly effective game, and we're going to need that from him. He plays both sides, plays penalty kill, plays power play, and to have him back in the lineup was obviously a nice addition.